Okay, so we uh, will continue moving forward. Uh, I've spoken with Okay. Um, I've spoken with uh, you three individuals who have just a, a little bit of uh, uh, makeup work to do because of uh, illness or, or what have you. So um, just go ahead and get those things done because if uh, we don't, then it has to go in as missing and we don't want any missing work because campus doesn't recognize that as your best of intentions. You click on missing and what does it think your score is? So it says, oh, well, they're going to have a zero. And it stays that way until you come in. And, and I haven't done that yet, but if it continues, we're please get in and get that taken care of. And not only because it's your responsibility, but it's also not fair to, uh, to everybody else. Who, uh, uh, and, and I know it, it's not fun being sick. So you're the ones that sick. They're here. So uh, getting their work done. And I wouldn't want to be uh, uh, sick either. So. Besides falling further and further behind, that, that's not uh, fun either. So we start our first phylum, okay, which we will cover approximately three or four more before the end of the semester. And that's what your exam deals with, what we call a phylogeny tree and how you break all these animals down in their appropriate phylum, class, sometimes even order as well. Now, that doesn't mean anything to you right now, nor, nor should it, because we haven't talked about it yet. Okay, so when we look at the phylum periphera then, uh, you see the, the, uh, the word pore, porous in there. Just like if you run your hand over any set of uh, concrete blocks, what would it feel like to yourself? Yeah, it feels rough, correct, but it's all cement has lots of what inside of it? Pores, yeah. So one of the things that uh, we see happening, if there's a high water table, um, that means a lot of water pressure underneath the ground, it'll push its way up through that cement and concrete just because it's porous. And that's where this animal gets its name just because we, we see they have all these pores in them and what do sponges that we normally think of tend to do? Soak up water, right? Okay, so what does it mean to be a sponge? Well, okay, we're, we're moving on as far as what we would consider uh, uh, what type of organisms could say are classified in the animal kingdom. This you can see is the first part of multicellular organisms. And I'll explain why that's important in just a moment. think of it this way, uh, whether it's a basketball team, whether it's a uh, singing and chorus in a band or, or your football team, or I say that twice, I meant uh, your, your volleyball team as well. Not everyone is the same height, the same build. So what that means is you have that breakdown of, of uh, what we see here. Uh, I want to say breakdown of labor is what I'm trying to say. You have your individuals that are your linemen, your individuals that are your backs, your individuals that are your receivers, or uh, whether it's music, your individuals that are your bass, tenor, what, alto, and what's the other one, soprano? Those are your four. Okay, so something to that effect. When we have these multicellular at organisms, they can specialize in whatever function they need to do, whether it's a uh, being a nerve cell, a muscle cell, a skin cell, um, a, uh, a cell for uh, contraction, 
which, which was what a muscle cell would do. So that's why being a multicellular organism is going to be an advantage. But these animals are not complex at all. And one of the things you're going to want to get through your heads is if we have another one of those check on learnings, which we will, well, not today, not tomorrow, but there's a reason that animals belong in this phylum. Okay? Has anyone ever been on either coast, gone into the ocean at all, and actually seen a coral reef for some of these sponges at all? I mean, I didn't fly till I was in college, and I've never really been out of the Midwest all that much. So if you haven't done either one of those, don't feel bad that, oh, my gosh, I live in such a sheltered life. Well, so, so do a lot of people. Not, not everyone has that ability to travel. But should you have had that opportunity, you would see organisms like this. Okay? So we call these sponges the phylum periphera. Yes, they do, they do lack tissues or organs, and the reason is they don't move. Because as you look at one of your vocab terms, it would say sessile. That means no movement occurs. That's what, again, what sessile means. things I want you to think about these animals that are very simple these sponges we see that they have a filter feeding mechanism does just being a filter feeder does that mean that that's going to be a very basic animal or can they become complex as well I mean very complex like mammals the answer would be yes and I believe we would have seen that when it, we talked about uh, that, that video that dealt with size, okay? Uh, now the largest land mammal would be who? Find them in Asia and Africa. Elephants, okay? But the largest land carnivore, okay? Wouldn't be the elephant, that would be your polar bear, okay? That would be the largest land carnivore. But then what's the largest organism on the entire earth then in something in the water so how is it there's a there's a one main reason why blue whales can grow as large as they do there's a lot of stress and strain that would be put on their bones except for in this case why is it an advantage if you're that heavy to be in the water something about the weight what about the you're right what about the weight Sort of, yeah. Being in the water, like you individuals, do you? Some people may sink, but more often you tend to what? Float. So there's a buoyant force that pushes up on that organism. So yeah, it lessens the weight on there. So has anyone ever had to have rehabilitation on their knees at all? Or where would you think you're going to do that rehabilitation? Not in the weight room, well, at least not right away. In a, in a whirlpool, for instance, because as you're sitting in there, that water is going to push up on your body and take some of that weight off of your joints, which, it ha which is a good idea because then it doesn't have to work as hard until you get some of that strength back, and, that, and that's why it's done. But you're true. You, you, it's true that being heavy, you can sink faster. That's true. When we start talking about the vertebrates, especially that of the fish, okay? Perch, trout, many of them uh, animals, they have what's called a swim bladder or a gas gland. So what happens is as that swim bladder fills with air, that's going to cause it to go up. But they compress that swim bladder, 
like what whales would do, they'll get all the air out of their lungs. That allows them to sink then. That's right. So just being a filter feeder doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be a simple animal. There are many different types that are way more complex than sponges that are also filter feeders. So this means they don't move, but what we see happening, we'll talk about why having these tiny, tiny pores leads into the idea of what we call filter feeding. There's no rhyme or reason why that's white at all. Just for some reason, I, I don't know why it's white. The, the note taking process when we get to the end of this that's where we'll stop but we're not done for today we're going to want to try to use utilize and see some of our artistic abilities is that anybody in here oh they're a good artist i bet some of you are probably better than what you think Is that just a sweatshirt, or you like Montana? Just a, just threw that on. Yeah. Yep. Because otherwise, that's got two of my favorite letters on there. You know, if you just take your your finger, you point to your head and say them two letters. M and T. M and T. Just do it. Just say MT. MT. Empty. Well, that's not the case for everybody. Yeah. Empty. Come on. Depends who you ask. Say, yeah. <laughs> this guy, he's got an empty head. Yeah. Okay. Does everyone have this information that wants it? But, like I said, I would suggest that you draw this because you're going to have a diagram over this on your exam. I can guarantee you that you're going to see that. Are we, are we good? All right. So, and trust me, we won't grade you on your artistic abilities because if that was the case for me, I think I would be in trouble too. So... Anyway, so as we uh, proceed forward here, so one of the last things that you had wrote in there, spicules and spongin, okay? What is the main... I wouldn't say goal, but what's the main concept of a skeleton? Whether it's in a sponge, whether it's in a building, or whether it's in a person or a mammal. What's the major and protection? That's true. But in your case, what does your skeleton do for you besides protection? Something, uh, somebody says something about strength and then support. Yeah, both, really. Because... It, it provides what we call the scaffolding. That's what a, a skeleton's major job is. So what we see happening here, okay, so this is the, not the, well, it can be the ocean floor, but mainly um, the, the bottom of, of the sea, wherever it is you're at. Now, this is not fresh water. This is salt water. So what we see happening is some of these sponges can can actually get to be quite large but in this case okay like I said I know not the best artiste but you say it probably looks like a tornado and I would say yeah you're probably right yeah. Yeah. get a I get a B for that that's certainly not a work no it's B work. Yeah. 
okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll agree with you there. Now, one of the things that we see, so this is attached to the, to the sea floor. And we said that these animals are, are very, very simple. <coughs> Excuse me. Did we say anything about muscular tissue? No. Because typically when we hear the term skeleton, we're going to say something with a muscular skeletal system, probably. But what's the major function for muscle? For movement. But if they don't have any muscle tissue, are they going to move? Of course, the answer would be no. Okay? So what we see happening here is, we'll make this a, like a little wider. Okay? So this is the sides of the sponge. Okay? And then this is where it gets to be kind of a, maybe a little bit tricky, is we're going to have to do something like this. So why am I putting these lines, why did I put solid lines in there and now I'm doing something like that? That doesn't make any sense, does it? But you got to remember what's the phylum name that we're talking about? Peripheral, which means they've got pores. Yeah, you're getting a little too, you're, you're right, but you're just getting a little too far ahead of me. So it's kind of like if we're, we're running that race, I was going to say, say, slow down. Let, let me catch up. No? You just wanted to hurry up and get to the end so you could sit down. <coughs> Excuse me, sit down. So that was you, that was you, and that was you, that was you, and that was you. That was probably you and you. Uh, how was that for you? It was fun, wasn't it? Okay. Let's see, see th okay, before you respond, this is what you say. I will if you will. You can just say it. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, he's he's already a year ahead of you, so so he can say, yeah, go do that. But why don't you listen to your elders? Because he he's your elder. He's older than you, right? Yeah. So are you gonna listen to him? He's one of your team captains too. You gotta think about that. Nah, I digress. Right. So, well, what, what about, okay, so, Mr. Riker, the ball's in your court. Oh, okay, so I, I guess that let you off the hook then. Whew. Right? But just think of how fast you could get to be if you're out for cross country. I know you're running distances, but your endurance would be so much higher. But I get it. It gets to be a long day for uh, the volleyball players, the football players that actually do partake in that. Even if it's junior high, that can get to be a long day because it's 7 o'clock, get out and start running. So, But uh, let's go ahead and keep moving forward here. So this inner chamber here, it's not that it's empty. But what we call, we'll, we'll get to that probably tomorrow or, or further on. It's called the spongal seal. I mean, it's, it's just uh, uh, an, an empty cavity or gastrovascular cavity. Maybe that's even better. But what we see happening, this is why they get the term what we call filter feeders. So they're not feeding on fish. So why would you guess that these animals probably can't feed on fish? You gotta remember, are these very simple and basic animals or are they a little more complex? They're very simple. So they just do not have the hardware to digest fish. You would have to have something to not necessarily chew it, but that would be an advantage, then swallow it and then actually go into a place that could break it down with enzymes and be able to absorb it and then pump it throughout the rest of the body. That is just not possible. So what we see happening here is we've got these water currents with organic materials, okay, that come in through the side of the sponge, then they'll shoot out the top of what we call an osculum up here, okay? That's the top opening. That's another vocab term, okay? So there's three things that we attribute to the phylum periphera, what they are. One, they're sessile because they don't move. They don't have muscle 
muscle tissue. Two, they all have an osceum. It's that big opening at the top where this water is shooting through. And three, they're all filter feeders because these organic materials with algae, okay, that's what their main diet is. So this water and algae comes in through these pores and then what's going to be shooting out the top then? Just plain what? Water because the organic materials have been filtered out and that's why they're called filter feeders. So the last thing we want to talk about here as we said when you think of a skeleton what does it do? Does it give you strength? Yes. Is it a site for muscle attachment? Yes. But it mainly gives support also as well. Okay. So what we would see here is if like in a cross section like a lot of little spikes inside of here. Okay. And the reason we say that is what are these little spikes called? It starts with an S. You know, we need to be a little more confident because I heard it. Right. Not stripes, I guess. Right. Say that again. Stripes. Spikes. Oh, spikes. Okay. Well, they look like spikes, but they're not called spikes, though. Stars. No. Mm, that drawing's not that good. They do look oh. like stars. No, no, no. You were close when you said spikes. Say that again. Spicules. Yes. These are spicules. Yes, they do look like spikes too. Yeah, I would agree. Okay. Yes, you call them spicules. All right. And then what's making up those spicules? Now, it's easy to get these terms mixed up. Spongin. So these are spikes called spicules that are made up of spongin, and then this inner cavity is called the spongal seal. Now it's going to be a little bit where these can get kind of intertwined and mixed up, but this is only your first day of talk, excuse me, talking about this. So again, the three main things I want you to know from today. One, phylum periphera is sessile. They do not move. Two, they have an osculum where water exits throughout the top. And three, they're filter feeders. I mean, if you got those three ideas down right now, holy cow, you're, you're doing quite well. All right, so we will continue to add onto this as we go because we got to put little tiny structures in here that actually do the filtering. It's not the spicules that do that. That's the skeletal framework that holds these sponges up. All right, we'll catch up to you next time.